my name is Stephanie and I love reading. But I got myself into a rut. In order to change this, I'm doing a review once a week. This is week three and I'll be talking about Enumeracy, Mathematical Illiteracy and What It Means by John Allen Paolos. This book was originally published in 1998 with a re-release in 2001 by Hill and Wang. This book is I consider light and entertaining read. It's only about 180 pages. Is not my first, nor do I think it will be my last in the category of mathematical nonfiction, with some focus on statistics and probability. I picked this book off my grandmother's math bookcase. She was a math professor and so has an entire bookcase and not just a shelf dedicated to math books ranging from this to hardcore theoretical textbooks because it seemed in line with my enjoyment of written for popular audience statistical books I picked I took this one with me. I should probably start with a small definition of what the author means by numeracy. It goes past just mathematical illiteracy alluded to in the title. A numeracy suggests that a person can add 2 plus 2 on a paper for school, but lacks the understanding behind the problem, lacks the ability to apply the problem to new situation, and lacks the ability to see the shortcoming altogether. This book is a bit more than just for the masses statistics book. It is also the author's call to the public his way of pointing out a weakness that he feels is kind of crippling our society. And while this sounds ominous, I found his writing quite humorous. It can be a little dry for some people, but I enjoy that vein of humor. I suggest reading the preface to the 2001 edition, because while it's not necessary, he does go into where he stands on a numeracy in the than current society. Sadly, I feel more people should be reading books like this. Uh, although he does point out that consideration of math and numbers has gone up in general, although it may not always feel like that today, like 16 years later. I enjoyed this book, and Palace's writing style I do feel that for the target audience, he rushes the explanation of the math, though he does state that all numerical explanations can be skipped if an enumerant or someone uncomfortable with math is reading, and this doesn't affect the central argument of the book. The first half of the book covers basic statistics needed to get through the rest of the book. This is more like the first third, and places where he most commonly sees a numeracy's effects. This part was okay. This is the part I felt was a little too rushed and it could have been a little bit longer. The book is quite short and so I think this is the section that got chipped because of its length. His examples in this half were fairly common and somewhat disjointed in writing, moving between the math and the writing. Towards the end of the second half, I started enjoying it much more as he delved into the real-life examples of enumeracy and where he saw them. The second half is broken into two sections, sort of like the first half. Uh, the first part being about why he thinks there's such a prevalence of numeracy, and I like how he goes beyond just education and explores other additional factors as well. And the second section mostly being a wrap-up with some statistics and probability thrown in that he didn't touch on in the first third. Reading the first part of the second half really reminded me of my grandmother quite strongly in this is in this section which is touching as she recently passed which is why I came into a, quite a number of her books recently and I felt that the second half of the book had more of the writer's humor 
seen mostly in his examples, which were more fun and unique than the initial setup in the book. My favorite being his uh, idea for logarithmic safety index, something I think we should actually have, that shares the real and not media imagined risk of an activity or situation with a single number based on a uh, base 10 logarithm of the number of people who die during that activity. So it would be an easy way to compare like actual risk of terrorist death versus car accident. Um, well, he says it in a very joking manner. It's a very real issue of people really not understanding risk assessment or chance or probability in the outliers. Um, all things he covers in much better detail. While this is not my number one math book, I do highly recommend this book to anyone who thinks that math is scary or that math isn't cool or even like reading it because you do like math and thinks that this nonfiction subgenre is quite a bit of fun. I don't recommend reading this only if you're going to feel attacked by his arguments against things like astrology, numerology, or any of the other pseudosciences he mentions. Um, and before ending, I also want to give a mention to the Skeptical Inquirer, which I will link in the description bar. They're basically the enumeracy police, and walk through the logic to many different situations in a magazine and website setting. Palace mentions them as an enjoyable read in the book, and I checked it out. I think you should too. Again, that link is going to be in the description below. Have you thought about reading this book? Have you not? Have you already read this book? If you have, what did you think? Let me know in the comments below. If you liked this review or have things you think could be improved, leave that in the comments as well. Next week, I plan on discussing The Hidden Life of Trees by Peter Wolburn. Oh, by Peter Wolburn. How they feel, how they communicate. Discoveries from a secret world. I'm really excited for this one, and if you want to see that, subscribe if that interests you, and thanks for watching. Bye.